So you just got your first inquiry about shooting a commercial video for a business, and you have no idea what you're doing as far as pricing as a solo videographer. In this video, I'm going to break down the exact costs to make and produce a solo video for commercial purposes. If you're new here, my name's Josh. I'm a professional photographer and videographer, and my goal is to help others like you become a successful full-time photography or videography business. Now, like I said, let's talk about this. You got an email, somebody is looking for a videographer, and they need a simple one-day shoot done. It's something that you could probably do yourself. However, I want to break down the pricing of adding just one assistant, and then going through all of the editing and everything by yourself. So let's go ahead, let's break it down. So Here's the thing is I know that you're going to want to go in and you're going to want to charge a thousand dollars or $500 because you want to make sure that you get this booking. We need to break this down and we need to figure out why charging $500 for a commercial video or even a thousand is not a good idea. Now there are other costs that we could add on to this, but this is the bare minimum. Say you are shooting a one day shoot with one assistant or a second DP uh, and you need to know how to price this. So let's, like I said, let's go, let's break it down. Okay. So I'm going to break this down as simple as possible. We're going to talk about three different things. We're going to talk about our equipment. We're going to talk about our time. And then we're going to talk about the final licensing, uh, allowing them to use it. So grab a notebook, grab a pen, grab your iPad, whatever you need. And let's take some notes. So follow along with me. That way you can figure out your pricing as I go. Now your pricing may fluctuate higher or lower. I'm going to keep a general generic price level for everything. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the first thing and that's your equipment. So in general, there's an industry standard right now if you're shooting Sony. Now Canon, Nikon, Fuji all have their own industry standard, uh, but I'm gonna talk about the a7 III. It is versatile uh, yet professional and we're gonna talk about that. Let's say that we're gonna use a Sony a7 III. Now for me, I would never go into a shoot without two cameras, without two bodies, because if you're doing any sort of interview session, you're going to want camera angle one and camera angle two. So let's break those down and let's say basically those are going to cost $1,500 a piece. So for two of them, you're going to need to spend $3,000. Now that is the cost of the bodies alone. You're not going to charge this client for those in full. Let's say that you're going to break that down and you're gonna figure out how many projects it would take to get that money back. And let's say over 10 projects is when you're going to make that money back. So let's go ahead and let's charge $300 for our camera bodies. This is our camera body cost because because 300 times 10, $3,000, you made your money back. Now you can't shoot on these bodies without lenses. In general, I would always go into a shoot with like an 85 millimeter or a 50 millimeter or maybe a macro 70, something tighter and then a wider. So let's go with a 35. Now you could also go with a 24 to 70. I don't want to get hung up on all these numbers because I know I'm already going to be throwing a ton of actual monetary numbers at you. So let's just go ahead and let's say you're shooting with a 50 millimeter and a 35 millimeter. And we're going to average at right around a thousand dollars a piece. So with those two, then you're talking about 2000 more dollars. Break that down over 10 projects. You're talking $200 per project. So now already you're at $500 just in the cost of your two cameras to rent, to use. Now, with that being said, we're also going to need to charge for lighting because you can't go into a shoot and just expect natural light to be everywhere, especially if it's an indoor location. So you need to think about lighting. Let's go with the bare minimum. Let's go one light and we will just bring that in. And what I would suggest would be the Westcott U60. Uh, it's a bi-color light uh, with a remote. It comes with a soft box and then we'll also need to add a tripod or a light stand in there. So let's add another $50. That's $200. So we'll go ahead and we'll add $200, but we're going to break that down over 10 shoots. So we're talking $20. So now we are at 520 total. We're also going to need to capture audio. Now, audio is something that I would not skimp on. Audio is super important when it comes to making a video. 
and we need to make sure that we're capturing professional grade audio. Now, with that being said, you could go with something like the DJI Mic 2 and then add a lavalier mic to it. So let's go ahead and go that route and let's say right around $400. So we will go 400 divided by 10, 10 shoots. So we're talking $40 per shoot. So we are at 560. This is just the breakdown for the equipment rental costs. And that's basically what you would be calling this because they are renting the equipment to use it from you. Now, this is just the cost of your equipment, and this is the bare bones minimum. I'm not talking about bringing in a chair for them to sit in, needing a teleprompter if you need one of those, um, needing extra batteries, SD cards, all of that stuff. That's all going to be additional costs as well. I don't want to break this down that far. I'm sure you can figure out how much those cost. So now that we've already figured all this out, we are already at $560 just for what we need to shoot this. And there, like I said, there are a ton of other things. You could add second lights. You could add other microphones. You can add a boom mic. You can add a recorder. All of this stuff that you could add in to shoot this video project. But what we're going to do is now we need to talk about your rate, uh, assistant cost, everything like that. So let's break that down. Okay, so now we need to talk about the cost to actually be there to shoot. This is not your actual filming. This is not your editing time. This is just the rate for you to be there. Now, let's say that you have a lower rate. Now, mine on average is a, between $800 and $1,000 a day to be there. Um, but that is also my shooting cost. So I factor those both in together. So let's say we're going to do that. Let's say that it's going to cost you $500 to be there. So even at bare minimum, you're talking $500 just, just for the creative person to be there, just for you to be there. And that's not a lot. Because if you think about it, you're going to be there six hours, seven hours, you're not making that much. So that's just to have you there. Now, you're going to need somebody there with you. Yes, you could probably run and gun this, but setting up the lights, setting up the cameras, moving all of that, that's going to take some, some umph, some time, and that's going to cut in. So let's say you bring in one assistant, and that assistant is just in charge of uh, moving equipment, setting it up, taking it down, kind of helping you out, handing you things, moving stuff around like objects that are in the background, anything like that. And let's say they're going to charge you $200. This is... A little on the low side, but not too bad for a, a small project. So now we are talking about $700 just for you two to be there shooting on top of our already our 560. So we're talking about $1,260 so far just in the cost of being there to create it and your equipment. And I also didn't even touch other equipment like gimbals to shoot the b-roll or sliders or other small cameras like gopros if you're doing any pov stuff there is so much more that like i said you could add into this but this is your price so far this is what you're at but in general you might need to bring another person with you so you might need two assistants most of the time i bring two assistants with me um, but i don't necessarily need one uh, another person you could bring would be a behind the scenes film person, somebody recording the behind the scenes for you. That way you could put out more content based around this. And if you're wondering why you should be creating content, uh, make sure you check out my online webinar called Photo Hustlers Blueprint. This is going to show you how to go full time within six months without going broke in the process. This is a full 90 minute webinar showing you exactly the three top secrets on how to go full time without going broke in the meantime. It is completely free. Link is in the description down below. Make sure you go check it out. It is only available for a limited time. So don't wait, go check this webinar out and I will see you in it. Okay, so, so far we are at $1,260. That's what it's going to cost for equipment. That's going to cost for us to be there. And that's going to cost for our one assistant. Now, we need to think about this. Let's talk about your editing. So let's say you're going to do the audio yourself. You're going to do the color grading yourself. You're going to do the storyboarding, the timelining, the clipping, the editing, uh, color grading, color color correcting, uh, all of it yourself. So you need to figure out what that's going to cost you to do that and how long it's going to take. So on average, let's say that your audio editing takes 
five hours to edit the audio. It's probably going to be a little longer than that, but I'm being on the lower side. So let's say it's going to cost five hours. What is that going to cost you to do that? And I'm going to give a ballpark average here. And let's say there's going to be $100 an hour for you to edit this. That is on the extreme low side for cost for editing. If you are going to hire someone to edit for you, it's going to be way, way higher than that. So 100 hours times 10, that's going to be 1,000 hours. I mean, $1,000. Not 1,000 hours. Uh, that would take forever. Um, $1,000. So now we are at 2260 So from there, we need to figure out what it's going to cost to edit the video. Now, let's say color grading, color correcting, those are going to be your longest probably edits because you need to go through every clip, color grade it, color correct it. That's going to take, let's say, probably another 10 hours. Then we need to talk about putting the clips together, storyboarding, scripting, all of that. That's going to take another 10 hours. So that's another 20 hours of work. So you're talking $2,000 more. 2000 more puts us at 4260 so you're already at $4,260 just to do this much so far. This is pretty much creating the entire video for them. Now, this is where we're at right now. We're at $4,260 just to put together this video. That is bare minimum. That's not going in and doing any deep dive edits. That's not going and adding any vi video effects, uh, no transitions, nothing like that, because anything like that is going to add extra time to it. This is just a simple two camera, a roll interview with some B roll footage behind it. Now we need to talk about the cost for them to use it because this was just the cost for you to shoot it and make the video. That's not the cost for them to be able to use it. That's called licensing. Let's talk about licensing. So here's where licensing gets interesting and it can fluctuate all over. Uh, what you need to do is you need to figure out a few things. You need to figure out where they're going to use it. You need to figure out how they're going to use it, as in, is it just uh, social media campaigns or is it like a full scale advertising campaign? And you need to figure out how long they're going to use it. So are they going to use it for one year? Are they going to use it for 10 years? Are they going to need new videos in the future where they're only going to use it for three months? That's what you need to figure out. And then the final thing you need to figure out with this is, are they going to need variations? So are you going to need to go in and make more versions of this? Or is it just this one complete video? Are they going to need vertical video versions? Are they going to need shorter clips? Are they going to need it broken down into smaller clips? This is where all of these questions factor into the cost of how much you're going to charge them to allow them to use your material. This is your material. You shot it. You created it. This is something that ne they need to pay you for. So with that being said, it's kind of hard for me to give an actual price. Um, it, it's all over the place. It's, it's all dependent on your location. It's all dependent on uh, where they're using it and, and the factors that I broke down. But on average, let's say you're going to give them a five-year license for this. And this is going to be one of the questions that people have. They're like, well, what is a license? I paid you to shoot this. No, you, you paid me to shoot this, but you didn't pay to be able to use it because this all of this artistic creation, this video, is my artistic creation. I created the video. I own the copyrights. I own the material, the footage. If you want to borrow it or lease it from me, we can figure that out. And that's what licensing is. This is one of those things that not a lot of people talk about because it makes you sound kind of arrogant or cocky because like you're charging for your work, but it's your work. You put the time in to make this. So you want to make sure that that stays your intellectual property, that that stays your your copyright, your your creative artistic piece of work. So that's that's super important. So let's say you're going to charge them five years. You're going to charge them $500 a year. So that's $2,500. So $2,500 for the license. Uh, I probably spelled that wrong, but that's okay. Um, $2,500 of license for five years. 
Now, after five years, they need to re-up. They need to renew that license. It could be the same price. It could be a higher price. It could be a lower price. It could be, depending on how they used it, it could be an astronomically high price, depending on it, how they use this. If it's just a commercial and they're bringing in a ton of money from your video, raise the price. But let's say that we're just going to keep it the same. Now, if you want to, you could do like a lifetime license. A lot of people do that these days. I typically don't because I've noticed that most people won't use a video longer than like uh, five years. Honestly, longer than probably two or three years before they need a new one. They need it updated. So let's do a five-year license. So that's a grand total then of, I had to look it up, $6,760. Terrible at math. So numbers are not my strong suit. So you should definitely hit that like button and the subscribe for this video because numbers are hard for me. So to sit down and make this video was a chore. So you're talking $6,760 your cost to make this video. Now you're going to get some blowback about the license. Nobody understands, especially if you're in a small town. Now, if you're working with a big conglomerate business that understands licensing, has a full marketing division, stuff like that, you might be able to not really break this down. But if you're working with a small business, a uh, mom and pop shop or something like that, they you're going to have to tell them why they need to buy a license. Because once again, they're going to be like, well, I paid you to shoot this. Not only are they paying you to shoot it, the way that I break it down and I tell clients is, yes, you paid me to shoot this project, but there's a license because it's my copyrighted material. It's my artistic work. However, the reason you're paying for the license is because you're going to be making money off of my project. You're going to be bringing in business. You're going to be bringing in people through the door. Uh, you're going to be bringing in traffic to your business through my work. So because of that, there is a cost on that. There is a let's basically say kind of like a royalty. So that is the total cost, bare minimum of what I would charge. Total cost all the way out the door, $6,760. That is equipment, bare minimum equipment. That is one assistant, that is your rate, and that is editing time. And finally, licensing. So that is what it's going to cost to shoot a video for somebody if you're doing a one-day solo project. It's not cheap. So if you're shooting a $500 project for a full day, or if you're even shooting a thousand dollars, you're going to lose $5,760 with this project. Now, the number one thing that I tell everybody is make sure you're charging the worth, make sure you're charging what it's worth, but also don't be afraid to turn the project down. If the numbers just aren't lining up, there's no reason to take a project that you're going to lose almost $6,000 on. There are going to be more projects coming your way. I promise that if this one doesn't work out, it's not them personally not liking you because they reached out to you. They want to try to work with you. Maybe the numbers just don't line up. Maybe they don't have the budget for it at that time. If you're rude to them or if you're just like, well, no. In the future, they could have the money for this project, come back and then book you. At least you've ran through everything with them. Now, I highly suggest doing a line item invoice for them, showing them exactly why you're charging them, what you're charging them. That way they can see everything broken down. It is a much easier way to book this project if they can go and they can say, oh, this is the cost for this. This is a cost for equipment rental. This is the cost for editing time. And they'll see everything and it's a lot easier. So you kind of have to stand your ground. And the reason that you need to stand your ground is because if you don't, Let's say you go in and you you bite the bullet and you shoot this for a thousand dollars. You don't make any money off of it. You kind of donate your time. But what's going to happen, or what could potentially happen, is they could go in and they could actually tell business B, oh well, Josh came in and he shot this video for fifteen hundred dollars and it was amazing and we've made this much money off of it. Business B is going to reach out to me then and he and they're going to be like. Well, you shot this video for $1,500. This is what we want. And then you kind of locked yourself into a price or you seem like an asshole. So that's something that you need to think about is your pricing needs to stay level on all playing fields because of future business. And you can always raise your prices. But if you charged business A $1,500 and then you come to business B and charge $7,000, they're going to be like, well, no. 
No, we're not paying that much. But that's that's way too much. He didn't raise his prices that much in six months. So you have to remember that there is a standard. There is a price that you need to charge that covers your costs and allows you to make a little bit of money. I didn't even add any profit into this. This was just the cost to break even for your time, for your editing time, for your equipment. This is not any profit on top of this. So quickly, a $6,760 video turns into a $8,000 video so you can make some profit for your business. We didn't cover taxes. We didn't cover insurance. We didn't cover anything else that you need to make sure that you're doing this professionally and properly and safely. So take those numbers, unscramble your brain because I just threw a whole lot of stuff at you. Go get yourself a, a drink or some coffee. Figure these numbers out yourself. Leave a comment down below with your pricing on what you would charge. I hope this video helped you. If it did, really consider watching this video right here because I think this one will help you as well.